Welcome back to Random Dude's Workshop. My garage is messy, so I'm trying not to uh, show you the rest of it. But today, we're going to be replacing my Atom Stack A24 Pro with an X-Tool P2S, courtesy of me. So, if you want to see a complete amateur, minus my partial experience with the A24, if you want to see my view on how the P2S stacks up against an entry level diode and making that jump from entry level to like prosumer, uh, go ahead and stick around and uh, watch the video. Let me know what you think. Thanks for joining us. Apparently, the delivery company can't read. So, this thing is like freaking massive. That's what she said. All right, so we've got the base assembled now, the riser for the uh, P2S. But as you can see, uh, well, not a whole lot of room back there for the ventilation system that has to go in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and expand this out probably four to six inches. That way there's room back there and uh, this isn't so, cutting it so close. But we'll uh, go ahead and get everything assembled and just see how it goes for now. This box is just massive. That's what she said. Very messy. So ignore that. Oh, no. Oh, phone. Not a good... Uh... <laughs> Only so many places you can film where I am, all right? Let's see what happens there. I'm not weak by any means, but sitting on this is gonna be awkward, I guess, to say the least. Like, There's like no, there's no handles on this thing. How does everybody else pick this thing up? It's a two person job, isn't it? So when you first receive the P2S in the mail, it will have packing materials and additional accessories inside. You'll need to remove these along with the safety screws so that nothing gets jostled during shipping. And in addition to those things, you'll also need to remove the back so that you can fill the CO2 laser tube with an antifreeze and distilled water mixture so that you do not let it freeze in the cold winter months and it can cool properly. So let's talk about Xtool Studio. Now, in working with this, there's a lot of things that take a little while to kind of get used to. Um, you know, but overall, it's a very good software. It is a lot different than Lightburn. And some of the things that are in Lightburn that are easy to find are hard to find in Xtool Studio, or they take a little bit of clicks. And a lot of that is to bring down the overwhelming you know initial learning curve of lightburn right um, so transitioning to this it's like going from an android operating system on your phone to an iphone operating system um, i think that's a pretty good comparison and we'll open up like i designed this turtle box right for my daughter and this one's super neat. So I got part of this online, the turtle, and then I had the AI actually generate the coral and produce everything else. And when you click on it, you can come in and do all sorts of things. Um, but I find this part kind of unintuitive here, right? Like, so you have to, you can ungroup it, click it, and you click edit. So I don't like, it feels like an extra step here, basically, like having to come after you click on an image, it gives you this, 
cool awesome setting I like that but when I click on it I feel like another thing should pop up down over here of all the editing features or naturally a toolbar expansion over here instead of having to directly hit edit right so this takes me and still takes me forever to remember uh, to come in here but you know AI cutout AI expand you have all these things and of course if you use the AI versions so this says AI cutout but also you should know it's a regular cutout as well and you can come in here it's like oh AI cut out. just go with manual right and just click whatever you want I'll do an example boom 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 right so it removes all pixels that are basically the same right and we're gonna cancel that because I don't want to cut that out anyways uh, I just wanted to give a quick preview of what that looks like and I really like the select materials. I think that's something every single laser engraver should have, but I'm maybe getting ahead of myself. Okay, so let's go back and I'll show you how the first engraving kind of turned out. So this was just a reindeer that had AI generate, and then I used stock settings on the basswood um, for all of that. So works out really well, really good stock settings. So this is a personal project that I worked on on the Xtool P2S, where one of my fellow employees was looking to do an art show and sent me this initial easel, like how much would it cost to cut a hundred of these? And so I did the calculation, arranged it best I could. Um, however, I realized that after looking online, there's a better solution such as a low profile 3D print or turning that 3D print into, well, uh, 2D cutout for the X tool. And here you can see that it works just fine and the material cost savings is huge. I mean, it's literally one tenth the size or less. So we're able to produce all these for one sheet of 24 by 24 basswood, significantly cheaper than buying them or cutting out the large versions. So this is just one of the things you can do with the P tool S or any laser engraver if you're really, uh, engineer mindset. All right, so like I said at the beginning, I'm not an expert and well, I had the Atom Stack A24 Pro when this video began. So now with this Xtool P2S, I have created a few things that I think are pretty good and there is still a dramatic learning curve like struggling with the rotary tool and um, the software itself is drastically different than Lightburn. Things that I learned in Lightburn that were fairly quick just take a few extra steps in this. But there's a lot of nice things about it too for beginners and I think it definitely lowers the learning curve. And something I want to talk about is the software itself on this is still light years ahead of your average CNC machine in terms of CNC uh, woodworking or routers uh, for the wood, which I'm hoping to get into maybe by next year or sooner if opportunity provides it. But this Xtool P2S is definitely really good bang for the buck if you're looking to get something that's the next level, has all the nice things. The only thing I have to complain about is a really weird software glitch, which I think might be from just maybe an uh, incompatibility. So it logs into the Wi-Fi, but my router doesn't identify it with an IP address. So when the IP, I can't set it to a static IP for my router because my router doesn't recognize it but we'll log in with the IP address that it states it has when connected to Xtool Studio, but my router doesn't recognize it under that IP address. So I can't label it and give it a static IP, which I like to do for all my things like my Bamboo P1P and uh, my home servers and that sort of thing. But I'll show you a couple, the last thing I made on it. Uh, well, I mean, I'll give you a couple close-ups. So this was a failed box. I redid this again after I learned that the auto settings are actually pretty okay. And then 
this is the last thing I made on it right here. I had to test the rotary tool, so I'll bring that a little bit closer. Um, still learning a lot there, but of course, as soon as I buy this thing, right, and get it set up, literally a week after it arrives, they come out with a RA3, which just looks phenomenal, and hopefully I'll have a review video on that. Anyways, I know this was a short video. I hope it was informative. I hope that I answered some of your questions. Um, let me know if you have any comments. Like and subscribe. Thanks again for tuning in to Random Dudes Workshop. Check out my next video coming out about, um, well, it's a new 3D printer to me and it will be a significant upgrade over this guy. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.